<laughs> we hope you're having a hell of a start to your week after taking the weekend to clear all the bats out of your bail for you. Well, I'm here to introduce you to your host tonight. That's right, guys. It's Monstrous Mondays. And your host, the mad monster, the grimy grinning ghost, the demon that keeps us screaming, Dean Von Odd. <laughs> Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Monstrous Mondays. Uh, my name is Dean Von Odd, and um, sorry about the Facebook thing uh, this week, guys. The tech issues just don't stop with um, the streaming service. I, I swear, we're, we gotta find another one. So in the chat, if you guys know of any other cool streaming services please let us know because last week it wouldn't let us do youtube this week it's not going to let us do facebook so uh but we are live right now on youtube uh make sure to hit the link below hit that tip jar and tonight uh we have our second guest with us and it is uh one of my good friends here in georgia and he is an award winning horror director richard tanner how are you tonight man what's up man i'm doing pretty good how are you i'm okay but you know midlife crisis and all <laughs> oh, yeah. i know it um so yeah so we're gonna have some fun tonight talk some horror uh but first um let's talk about you so that the the folks out there know um who richard tanner is um, where, uh, did you, in life, did you decide that, hey, I want to be an indie horror director? 
Okay, that's a good question. Um, mine actually happened at the cons, um, specifically Days of the Dead, because I was always a big horror fan. Anyone that's into horror starts out young. You know, you start watching Monster Squad, then you're watching Evil Dead, and you just keep going more and more. By the time I found the horror conventions, though, like, they were blowing my mind. I'm like, whoa, there's a lot of shit I don't know. I thought I was an expert. Right, right. So, I started talking to people, man. Like, I met Fred Vogel, I met uh, Jason Hoover, and both of these cats were doing movies I couldn't imagine being made, and, like, they were amazing. And they started telling me, like, hey, go out and make a movie. So, from that bad advice, I did. I spent a lot of money and started making... (laughs) I made my first one, ooh, I think it was, like, six years ago now. It was when I uh, first started. I made my first short called Hematolangia. What what was it called? Hematolangia. Is there a, what does that mean? Uh, it's like, um, what's the opposite of phobia? Like a love, a love for blood. Like ah, people that like you. to drink blood. I think. <clears throat> I don't know. I didn't come up with that title. And I still have <laughs> a poster art for it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so let me ask you this. Um, because we're going to be talking low budget films and everything. How much did you make your first film for? Oh, man. So low budget, like, you know, we're a buck short productions and it's not just a clever name. <laughs> uh, first one I ever did is like the short before I even got to features. Like I bought a new camera, which was $300. And that was about it. Maybe $500 when I started just on, you know, different bloods and figuring out how to do that. Right. But yeah, no, 500 bucks when I started making shorts and then maybe maybe I spent three grand on the first feature. Wow, wow. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty much where what we did porcelain for uh, was 500 bucks, give or take. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely understand uh, the whole buck short thing for sure. Um, now, out of all the movies that you have produced, um, what it, what has been your favorite one so far? Oh, it's the newest one by Barr. Um, it's uh, Mother News Presents Once Upon a Nightmare. <laughs> Bless Sorry. you. Yep. Now I have to sneeze every time I say that just to make it look like it's on purpose. Yeah. Uh, but no, <laughs> Mother News is the best thing I've ever done. It's amazing. I did start out, I did a movie called Once Upon a Nightmare. Um, that was my first feature. And I loved it because it, it was a complete turd. You know, I had no money. I didn't know what I was doing. But I like the idea of these uh, anthology fairy tales with very adult tones. Right. So I got to do that. And it turned out beautifully. I got to work with some very amazing directors and actors in it. And it was just like it became this group project that blows my mind. Like I actually watch it a lot, which I don't ever. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't watch my own stuff. Yeah, it's been a, a long time. Like the first time that I watched Porcelain uh, was the when we went back and watched it live on here, actually, and uh, I was just like, "Wow, this is so bad, man!" <laughs> but it was my first film, you know what I'm saying? But I rarely ever go back and watch anything unless it's like the b- blooper reels and stuff. Totally love the, watching all the the bloopers because that's the funnest part. <laughs> yeah. Um, who? Who would you say inspired you the most as a director? Who like um, the 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 big person that would have inspired me? Not the personal person. Big mm-hmm. person would have always been uh, probably Sam Raimi or Don Coscarelli. Like those are the two that got me. You know, a lot of people always go to, like, especially in our low budget. Everyone's like Toby Hooper, Toby Hooper, and I'm like, no, 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 man, like. These are the movies. Don Cascarelli, that dude was like true. I think that's the name of his book, True Indie. You know, so like I loved him. And of course, Sam Raimi, just the idea of getting out there and just grinding till you make it is amazing to me. I love that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, so we're going to bring up the first poster here uh, of your uh, very first feature, I want to say, Room for Rent. Mm hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that movie? Yeah, so Room for It is a found footage horror film uh, that stars Samuel Wise, Libby Blanton, and uh, cameos Aaron Brown, uh, or AKA Misty Monday, as a cop. 
which was hilarious. But uh, it is the story about a guy who loses his parents and has to live basically on his own for this first time. And he just buys a house. Um, and while he's in the house, he needs to get a roommate. So he's doing a little video blog and everyone keeps saying his house is haunted and he wants to convince them that it's not. And it goes from there. Um, and it turned out that was the first movie I ever won an award with. It was a, a really fun time. Like found footage, everyone thinks it's super simple. It is not. <laughs> right. It's very complex. You got to really work through it. And then you just kind of go, okay, film. And then you dive to the floor so no one sees the director. And you <laughs> just kind of go with it. It's um, it's hard to make a good one. But it's actually, it's fine this second life because it just, uh, I just released it on YouTube for free. Nice. Uh, just, I hadn't done anything with it. It was like, no one cares. And then, you know, in a month, we got 27,000 views on it. And Holy I'm like, shit. I wish y'all would have paid, but okay. At least someone's liking it. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's, that is absolutely amazing, though. 27,000 views. That's something to be proud about, man. Um, I am. Happy in it. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see here. Amanda Sawal asked, uh, what is the qualifying difference that makes a movie a feature versus the sh uh, short? I know length is a simple answer, but what's the line between the two? You want to answer that for her? Um, only because I deal with all the festivals all the time, which are, you know, hell for a filmmaker. So yeah. 44 minutes. 44 minutes is the difference. 44 minutes and below is a short, and after that, it's a feature. But then any true fan will tell you, you don't have a feature unless it's an hour and 15 or over because they're like, oh, if it's under that, it's not a real movie. So it's it's a confusing thing. Like, uh, what was that? The Host. Did you see The Host? The Host, The Host, The Host. Uh, it was the it was the COVID movie that came out on Shudder that was all done through Zoom. Yeah, yeah, okay, I did see that one. I think that was like 49 minutes, 59 minutes. It was like just under an hour. But like that's a feature film to me, but it's not the link that you need it. So it's hard to call a feature. It's pretty much you look at that 44 minute threshold is the technical answer, but then it's just what people will accept past that. Right, right. That's a good answer. And uh, let's see here. Um, Chasing Clouds 125. What's up? How are you tonight? Thanks for joining the screen, uh, the live stream. And Church of Chuck asks, screw, Mary kill. Tarantino, George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg. Tarantino, <laughs> Lucas. What was the first one? Because it didn't sound like fuck, Mary kill. It sounded like he said something else. Screw. I don't think he can type uh, fuck in the chat. <laughs> screw, okay. Oh, man. I'm out of it. Uh, let's see. Well, as much as I hate to say it, I guess I would have to kill Tarantino because I don't really want to have sex with him. I can't see myself being married with him. Right. I guess I'm putting <laughs> Lucas and then Mary and Spielberg just for, you know, that's got to be a real safe, you know, marriage, man. You know, you're just taken care of for life. He always has money. Yeah, dude. No, I'm pretty sure all those millionaires kind of fuck each other anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Keep, keep watching. We're going to uh, move on to the next... Um, movie so tell us I'm gonna go ahead and pull up actually uh, I have the trailer uh, for room for rent so we're gonna go ahead and dive in and watch the very first trailer here um, let's get this pulled up I am and we're gonna move the screen over just a little bit so it's outside of the comments here okay and uh, so this is gonna be the first trailer of uh, a long of film that Richard did. Uh, this is the trailer for Room for Rent. Let's check it out, guys. Hi, guys. My name is David Bagley, and well, I'm looking for a roommate. Getting as much sleep. 
really wrong with that. Stuff that happened in the app is definitely disturbing, to say the least. Damn, that made me jump. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't make the deal. It's okay. Prices are negotiable, obviously. And if you have any offers, questions, comments, concerns, please direct them to dbagley at gmail.com. Other than that, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Accomplished the trailer base, somebody jumped. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that I don't know. I don't know if it was just the sound in it that made me jump or what, but that was <laughs> so. Explain, I just saw a uh, website there. Um, what is where is david.org? <laughs> that was a failed experiment in um, <laughs> uh, advertising, so like I decided, like, what can I do to make this big? Like, I made missing person photos for. Uh, Sam, the main character in it, because at the end, of course, you mean spoiler guys, he goes missing. So I have all these missing posters and I'm putting them up and, uh, oh, people did not go to the link and they did not find that funny. They, uh, they got very mad over the missing person thing. So I just thought it'd be good because you remember Blair Witch would do that, like, this is real, this is real, it's found footage, you're supposed to make it like that. But you have to draw a line, apparently, whenever you're, uh, doing advertising. People don't like that. Right, right. Hey, that's pretty cool though. That that's um uh Aaron S says that was dope. Um that's something that you don't see a lot of any people doing. They they're like, "Hey, here's a movie." Um the outside of the box thinking on getting promotion is is something that's super important. That's why, you know, like me with the Autumndale website um you kind of just you want to try to do something outside of the box so that's really cool i'm i'm glad that uh that more people are are doing stuff like that um and uh man you should definitely be proud that that uh that got um 26,000 views and i'm 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 actually going to make it 26,001 tonight because <laughs> i've seen i've seen everything except for the new one and that one <clears throat> uh like the buck short shorts and everything um now do you want to talk uh I, you didn't send me a poster but um hey what's up d murder how are you tonight uh do you want to talk all of, any about buck short shorts where that came from and what project that is oh yeah that one was um just over the years, you know, like when you're doing feature films and you know this, like feature films or when you're doing this indie shit, that's what you got to do because shorts, they're fun. They're easy. You get to make them, put them out there. They're usually pretty good quality, but no one's going to pay to get a short, but you do it to keep, you know, and, um, keep referential. People keep, keep referring to you in between the year it takes to make a movie. Right. But after you know, six years, all of a sudden I'm like, Man, we got like 15 shorts. We should do something with this. So I did it backwards. Like you, you're not supposed to make a feature and then a shorts compilation. You're supposed to make a shorts compilation and then go into a feature. But <laughs> I just didn't want it to go to waste. So I put every short that we did on it up to that time. And now I would even have to go back. I don't even know what the last short is on that thing. Uh, I can't remember either. I'll have to pop it in later. Um, I'm sure there's been more since. Yeah, man, and that's that is something that kind of both we talked at uh, Spooky Empire when we went together. Well, we didn't go together, but we were there at the same time. We talked about how butt fucking backwards both of us did the film industry. You were like, yeah. "So do you have any short films?" I was like, "Nope, just these fucking." Well, technically, by technical standards, I have short films, but they're forty-five yeah. minute long short films. <laughs> yep. Um. Okay, so we're going to go on to the uh, next one, um, and this one is one of my favorites, man. And if you guys haven't seen this, um, you definitely, definitely need to check this out because I know all of my friends, I know all of my viewers, and uh, I definitely, definitely think you guys are going to love Frank and Thug. Now, where did you come up with the concept overall first? <laughs> So Frank and Thug was like something I've always wanted to do because I grew up 
I didn't grow up in the middle of nowhere. I grew up on the south side of Atlanta. You know, I grew up in Riverdale, <laughs> uh, you know, zone four. That was where I grew up at, you know. So me and my friends, um, we would always watch hood horror movies because that's, I mean, like, you can watch Jason, but I'm like, where the hell are they going to the woods at? What's this? Like, I don't know what this is. Like, <laughs> I'm walking down the street. So we would love, you know, Tales from the Hood. Um, we loved Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. Anything that was like that, we just fell in love with. So right. I grew up with uh, two guys, the two main characters in that, Doc and Frankenthug. Um, they were my best friends and my brothers. And I always wanted to put them in the movie. Neither of them are actors. Neither of them have any desire to do any of this. But I'm like, God damn it, this might be the last movie I ever make because every movie I make is going to be the last movie I ever make. <laughs> and I put them in it. And matter of fact, that's Mr. Freakin' Thug right there. Yeah, so, nice. <laughs> yeah, so no, I put them in it, and then we made this movie about a, a drug dealer coming back from the life, uh, back from the dead through magical weed, and he just wreaks havoc on a biker gang that kills him. Nice. It makes no sense. Troma bought it. And that should tell you all you need to know. And it has a great cameo by Del Jepsen and the Nighthawk. Oh, yeah. Del Jepsen and the Nighthawk. And uh, I have the poster pulled up here. And it says, get rich, die trying, and repeat. And <laughs> the art on it is so good. Now, you just said something that I do really want to talk about. Uh, how did you go about getting picked up by Troma? And is that not absolutely exciting to you, man? Oh, it was, especially because, like, Frank and Thugs, it's a, it's a hard place for me because I got screwed on my distribution deal. Uh, so if you see it on Amazon, don't go buy it there. Go watch it on Troma now. You know, hit me up. I'll sell it to you. But the production, uh, the distribution company I have screwed me. But I did, I actually don't even know how it had. Like, I had a um, festival manager for that one who was trying to get me into different festivals and everything. And she somehow met some guy that worked for Troma, and Troma approached me for it. Like, I didn't even go out of my way for him, and it did. It blew my mind. That like, you know, they're like, hey, we want to put this on our streaming site. And I was like, you mean I can be one of Toxie's villains in the future? Like, yeah, then let's do this. So, like, I'll never see money with it or anything, but it was it's very cool, like, for a horror standpoint. Like, the only other place I really want to go is I, like, want to be on full moon pictures now. Right, right. Yeah. But Troma, that's that's a step you gotta hit. Still not making money with it, but you know, hey, it's Troma, baby. Right, right. Uh, Sinister Zool, how you doing, man? And uh, Aaron says that's my kind of story. Yeah, I'm definitely. You guys should definitely check this out. Um, and where where can they go for the Troma streaming services? Just in case they don't know, so they can check that out. Um, it's Troma now. Uh, that you would go to and it's frank and thug that you'll search on it but um i don't know the exact website but if you go to google and just type in trauma now it'll come up it's ridiculously cheap it's like 4.99 a month to be able to watch all of trauma and then right. a ton of indie flicks are out there too uh, chris woods and sean donahue the sleaze box and gator blade guys mm. they do like death Lord service naked cannibal campers half of their shit's up there too like it's worth it definitely if you like if you want to see boobs blood and beast it's the way to go. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, uh, we're gonna go ahead and check out the trailer for Thrank uh, Thranken Fug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick, actually, before we go to the trailer, uh, there's one word that Franken Fug says the entire movie. Can you explain why oh. you chose that? And and it's it's comedy gold, man. I love it. I don't think I've ever told you this story, have I? No. So this is, you know, life imitating art, art imitating life. Uh, homeboy that just walked out, he plays Frank and Thug. And one day he got so drunk uh, when we were, I forgot what we were doing, we are hanging out, but he was so drunk that he would just be laying on the floor, kind of nodding back and forth. And you just see him sit up and go, Gucci! Yeah. <laughs> and it was the only word he said for three hours, Gucci, Gucci! And I just thought it was so funny that I put it in. I was like, that's going to be the only word he could say. Because also, again, my friends are not actors. I had no idea if he'd be able to memorize lines. I was like, you know what? This is the Jay and Silent Bob moment. I'm going to just puppeteer him in this and be like, move this way, move that way. Don't worry about lines. Go. 
Uh, Church of Chuck says prequel collab. Frankenthug worked for Mr. Knotts before they both died. <laughs> Autumn Dale crossover. Nice, I like it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out this trailer, and then I got a, a burning question for Richard when we get back. I got a burning pee. What? What are you doing this for? Nothing personal, kid. It's just business. Would have been a hell of a lot easier if y'all had just given me the body like I asked. I told you he was going to need it. And uh, that was the trailer for Frankenthug. And, and I don't want to give anything away, anything at all. But if you guys watch that movie, there is a surprise guest that just blows everything that you could ever watch away. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right, let's see. We got Luke the Goon in here. Excited for Friday, brother. Going to be fun. Yeah, we're going to talk about Friday the 13th here in just a little bit. Um, so Richard, tell me, uh, as an indie artist, man, and for artists that, um, are trying to do the same thing that we're doing distribution. Now you said you got screwed. What are some things for people to really look out for when they're trying to do this, uh, type of thing? And, um, you know, what do you suggest? What don't you suggest? Um, where, what's your standpoint on distribution? Because I know it varies from director to director. Mm -hmm. It's the whole industry is a giant rite of passage. Everything you do, you have to have your movie get bootlegged. You have to have, you know, at least someone try to sexually harass you. Someone try to smear your name. And distribution is one of these things. You have to go through distribution and just get completely reamed on it. Um, what happens most times is because, like, you know, you always have this option to where you want to do it yourself, but there's a limit. Like, you have a lot of fans. It's funny, when me and you first met, um, we met each other, we hooked up on Facebook, we talked, we became friends, and then all of a sudden, like, I knew you as a director. That's all I knew you as. I just started getting all of these people adding me as a friend. And I'm like, this is, this is a lot of juggalos, man. Why, why, am I, why are so many juggalos following me? I've never listened or said anything about juggalos. And then I look at your page and I found out you did music. And I was like, oh, so you have a very big following there. But your following still limited. So distribution gets it out to people who you would not have access to. Right. Problem is that's when you start playing that middle management game to where everyone wants money and you're not going to get money unless you have a huge hit, unless you're making Terrifier, which even then, I promise you, they didn't get much money from that first one. It's the second one they're making money off of. Oh, yeah. And then but, what did they, like, triple their goal in, like, the first 24 hours? Yeah. That shit's nuts. It is absolutely insane. So... With distribution, it's something you do have to think about. Like, if you get to that point in making a movie, because film and is one of the few things that you can do as an art form 
it also needs to be a business. Like you have, like you can't keep making films if you're not making money, unless you're just a rich kid. And well, we're not rich. Yeah, you know, by any so means. it doesn't make it any less uh, of an art piece, though. What you're doing is still creative, but you have to make it more marketable and try to sell it so you can at least make money to keep doing it. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. And it does take a lot of money. So distribution, the thing I would say to be careful for there is anyone that promises you a world and to look at your uh, distribution first because there's a million of them that put in. When you're the best movie going on that label, run away. Right. <laughs> if you've not heard any other movie, it's not good. But start watching the distribution labels too when you watch a movie like i love wild eye wild eye is an amazing distribution company i don't think they would make me money but i love the films they put out like they're great i love full moon i love trauma i like maverick entertainment um you know there's just a ton of different ones city vault that was another one from back in the 90s but oh, I yeah. they did a lot of hood movies but you got to just start looking like yeah pay attention to the directors the producers and production studios and the people that put the movies out and you learn that you'll start learning where to go and then always take with a grain of salt that if you think you're going to make money that you're going to make a lot less but that doesn't mean to stop trying right absolutely absolutely and um so i know there's a there's a few people uh that watch uh, the live streams um that really really love um indie horror um what are some of your favorite indie horror movies that are out that maybe people wouldn't know um that uh you think that they should we should all check out let's see if we can do this um definitely toe tag august underground because you know it's august now you gotta love fred vogel and the hammer man uh amazing a uh, huge fan of Billy Pond. Billy Pond's one of my mentors. He did Circus of the Dead. Oh, yeah. If you guys have Porcelain. Porcelain is really fun. Um, Tori Haas is a guy in Atlanta. I don't know if you've met him. He did uh, The Neon Dead. It was originally Invasion uh, mm -hmm. via Dead. And he did uh, Dead by Midnight 11 Central with okay. Hannah Fearman and uh, Aaron Brown. But those are some guys that are really great. And most of them are easy to find as well. Fred... Not so much because this shit's so extreme that you're not just going to go stream it on YouTube right. or Facebook thing. So, but like I know Circus of the Dead is on Amazon. I know Dead by Midnight's on YouTube. So, definitely look them up. Go to a Buckshort page as well. Like we always, uh, you know, put shoutouts to them. Let's see if I can get them to say it real quick. Hey, B, will you look at the camera and say Gucci? Will you just yell Gucci? There we go. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, I can't see here. I think it's, uh, yeah, Luke the Goon said, uh, Red Sin Tower is fucking dope by Fred Vogel. It's my fucking favorite one. I love Red Sin and Cella Tersica. Everyone always knows him for August Underground, but Red Sin is fucking great. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, let's get into another film. Now, this one is going to be a two-parter because... You had originally did something uh, previous. Let me go ahead and pull up um, the first uh, poster. So this one here uh, was is called Once Upon a Nightmare. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this aside here so people could see it a little bit better. Um, now this one, it shows a child um, sitting on the cover. Uh, it says, some stories were never meant to be told. Um, what can you tell us about this one? Well, first off, that's my little brother. Can't you see the resemblance? <laughs> I, I was going to ask, is that a kid-child picture of you, or...? Yep. Uh, no, that's not me. That's my little brother. He was uh, great in it. Uh, but the idea came... Um, well, you should know this. I used to do a podcast, and you came on it once with uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? I loved Are You Afraid of the Dark as a kid. Oh, yeah. And one of the best episodes was this terrifying fucking episode with Bobcat, Bobcat Goldwick to where he played the Sandman Oof. and drags this girl who's in love with fairy tales to the land of Nod and just kidnaps her. And it's I remember that. What the hell is Bobcat doing in a kid's show, man? But that was where the idea came from. Like, as a kid, I loved fairy tales. I thought they were great, but I always thought they were great because... I'm not sitting there reading pop-up books. I'm getting the old 
Germanic translations going, there's a lot of blood and my teachers don't know what I'm doing. This is awesome. So I did that with this original one. And like I said, had no money, no idea what I was doing. We just went straight into making a feature that was short stories. And it was all right. You know, it got a couple of little, you know, small play at uh, different um, venues and everything, which was cool. It made people like me because they're like, wow, you made a feature. That's great. Right. But it wasn't and it always stayed in my head for that uh like because i was really happy with some of the stories in it like i was really happy like i had that poster hanging up in my uh computer room even though like i don't really like the movie that much i love how the poster looks i love how my brother did in it it was just a nice like homegrown experiment it right. led to i'm guessing the next poster which would be mother news presents once upon a nightmare Yep, that's what, what I'm going to go ahead and pull up now. And uh, I want to um, pull this. I'm going to pull it over. Uh, let's bring it all the way up to the top because the art for this one is super dope. Um, who did the artwork for this poster here? Best, because I was going to say Frank and Thug was the same guy. That was uh, Stephen Gillum of Wages of Sin. I uh, did the artwork for it, and really good. Him and Dan Beck. Uh, Dan Beck's done a couple of arts for me as well. They're amazing at these poster designs. And, uh, I mean, so far, uh, what I'm seeing here, uh, I, just some things that I can point out. Uh, we have Pinocchio on the right-hand side here. We have um, Little Red Riding Hood up there at the top. Um, well, first of all, what was your idea going into this movie and um what were some challenges that you faced uh kind of upon being original with some of the old fairy tales yeah so my idea going into it was i didn't want to play it safe this time like i wanted to push the envelope and i went in and just wrote some fucked up shit i got someone else to write <laughs> two of the stories like i came up with the idea had another dude named kyle write two of the stories because i just wanted different perspectives i got a director for a different thing as well because i just wanted this to be more of um you know tells from the dark side to where you know you've got the story going but it's not just the same story each time it's right. just wild different and i did get tired of like you know there's some boobs in my movie that i do just to try to sell them but, like, I wanted to push the envelope more than that. Like, nudity is not really special. Like, that's that's a cheap shot. But I wanted more gore. And I really threw some gore and uh, some extremeness into this, if you will. Um, some of the challenges I had, though, were, like, I tell you, the stories and Mother News are um, Hansel and Gretel, uh, Three Little Pigs, Pinocchio, Cinderella, and Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood, I just took the exact same script from the original one because I just loved it so much. But Cinderella, Jesus, I thought that one was going to kill me. Like when you're trying to make something in a modern day mm -hmm. version of something, you're like, huh, how do I do this? And I mean, when in doubt, you add demons, of course. Right. But it was, it was kind of hard trying to find out how to make some of these more modern and then to change the tone on some of them. Uh, when you watch Pinocchio, anyone that ends up getting this, if you watch Pinocchio, it is hard to finish because it gets so disturbing and so depraved Oof. and uh i'm proud of that man like it's a, it's a difficult movie which brings me to the question and the big award that i saw you just win the other uh couple months ago right and this yeah this was for this movie why don't you tell them what you won and 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 what why <laughs> I won the Face Grinder Award, which I would grab, but I'll knock everything down, so I'm not going to. It's uh, literally a meat grinder on a plaque, man. And I got it for um, um, Brian Exploitation Film Fest. Uh, it was up in uh, Winchester, Virginia uh, this year. And uh, they're, uh, t they team up. They do more of the exploitation films that Genre Blast doesn't show. Right. And this is their title award. Like we won like the best in show, like, you know, there's best director and there was best feature, but this was like the fan favorite, the judge favorite. And I was so proud of that because it was, man, it was right post COVID. I had just got vaccinated. I was terrified of going. I'm like, Oh my God, why are we going to this festival? There's going to be no one there. And I'm driving to Virginia, but no, we ended up having like 40 people 
That's had awesome. That one, and I mean, it went really well. Everyone loved it. Met a lot of great guys up there and gals. And, uh, you know, I'm super proud. It's uh, one of the coolest awards I've ever gotten. And I was very rude and took it home and did not let any of my crew take it. Like, <laughs> fuck the Stanley Cup, man. This is mine. This is staying here. Of course. Love all of <laughs> Of course. Uh, Amanda says, uh, I think she was talking about the uh, Are You Afraid of Dark? She says, uh, I remember that episode. Aaron says, how can I get this movie? Ah, simple. So uh, my movies you can get from uh, www.abuckshortproductions.com slash store. Um, or you can hit me up on Facebook and find me there. Uh I will say do not order, because I've not taken it off the website. This shows you how often we do shit there. Um, do not order the Blu-ray of Mother Noose, because it is sold out currently. And it'll be a little bit before I can get it in, you know, back ordered. Have you, have you thought about doing a pre-order, maybe? Maybe some folks will grab it on a pre-order, especially after this. Oh, my, my fans are pretty fucked up, so <laughs> you might want <laughs> to... <laughs> You're, you're going like this then. No, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get more. Um, I just literally sold out. I was trying to sell out for the um, the Indiegogo backers and everything, and I am gonna have a second run of it, but it's going to be a different cover and everything because the Indiegogo backers have to get preferential treatment. You know, right. I want that to be a little bit more rare, but they will be coming back. So if anyone accidentally gets it, I'll message you. I'll tell you what's going on, but by all means, go get some because I could use some money for my next uh, project. And we'll get into that in a minute because I want to talk to you uh, about this uh, that next. But the trailer for this, the trailer for this, something really cool happened. Um, do you want to tell them a little bit uh, of a secret before we watch the trailer on who voices? Yeah, so um, Billy Pond, the guy that did Circus the Dead, did something I thought was brilliant at the beginning of COVID. Uh, he found Cameo. Which I know you know what Cameo is because you've done something similar here. But Cameo changed my life in the dumbest damn way because you can just get celebrities to say shit. <laughs> and most of them will say whatever you tell them to say. In my case, I got John Kassir, that's right, the Crypt Keeper, to do my trailer. So basically I have Aaron Brown, Misty Monday from Sick Girl, Masters of Horror, Lord of the g Street. I have an actual star in my movie. And then a voiceover, I got to work with John Kassir, man. And it's amazing because that trailer is flawless. And one of these days, I'll show you the actual cameo he did. The way uh, Dan Beck cut that trailer and made that smooth transition with that voice, you would think that we were all doing it in the same room. Nice. It works well. That's awesome. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and check that out and uh, talk a little bit more about the movie after it. And then uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more here. But uh, let's go ahead and bring it up now. This is the trailer for Mother Noose Presents Once Upon a Nightmare. Mother Noose Presents Once Upon a Nightmare. It's an ode to tales from the crypts. Oh, you gotta love that, kiddies. <laughs> It's a project after my own heart, if I had one. <laughs> it's directed by Richard Tanner and Dan Beck and starring Aaron Brown of Master of Horrors Sicko. <laughs> Check it out, kiddies, but be careful what you ask for. You may get it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I um I am super, super and excited to check that movie out because <clears throat> um I miss the Indiegogo, um, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but I am going to scoop it up hopefully here within the next couple weeks uh, because there was a lot of blowback also about 
how disturbing it was. I saw a couple reviews, and as as uh, you know, um, we kind of love bad reviews sometimes because it's uh, the one that I saw. It was obviously somebody that's never watched um, this kind of film before, and it seemed like he had totally just uh, lost his lunch <laughs> over the movie. Um, do you do you love that kind of press, or is that something that bums you out, or is that something that's like a yes, I did it? it it's weird because you know most of the times when I've gotten press on my previous movies because they're so unknown, I don't really get bad reviews. You know, it's just like people are just being too nice for it. Like they're like, it's shit. We know it is. This is the first time a movie's actually stood on its own two feet, and people will get brutal with it, and. It hurts when they start insulting my movie, yeah. but a lot of times, like when you get the bad guys in there, they're just like, "Oh, why would people watch this?" You know, there's there's literally dicks everywhere in this movie. And I'm like, "Yeah, I know it's great, isn't it?" You know, <laughs> and like people just get so upset. The only one that made me mad that I absolutely refused to post the review and didn't do anything was uh, a guy personally attacked some of the women in my movie, wow. uh, calling them ugly and fat. And I was like, oh, no, you don't get to do that. Like, I almost, like, messaged the uh, owner of the site who did it. I won't even mention who they are, but it made me that mad because those girls, you know, if the movie sucked, that's my fault. I was the director. I was the writer. I helped edit it. You know, it's one of those things that, like, if this sucks, it's my fault. But when you start attacking someone's looks, that's ridiculous, man. And so I got, like, real Papa Bearish over that one. But that was the only one that truly bothered me. The rest is, like... Hell, we would literally take the bad reviews and write what they said. Richard Tanner assaults your eyeballs. And it's like, yeah, that's a tagline now. Man, we just start posting that shit everywhere. You can't get bad press. Right. And now, speaking of bad press, during the whole campaigning for this movie, uh, well, maybe it was a little bit after the campaign, there was a big controversy about another film um, that was almost a complete well, pretty much a complete ripoff, and some shit happened. Did you want to talk any about that? That's hilarious. I've heard, I've almost forgot about that. I'm shocked you remember it. Uh, yeah, some asshat, I can't remember his name now, ended up scamming people because he was making a web series called Once Upon a Nightmare. And I found out because someone asked, hey, is this your movie? And I looked, and all of a sudden, I'm seeing all these people I know. Like, he's got Brandon Crane, who played uh, Ben Hascom in the miniseries of it in the 90s right. he had Phyllis Rose and you know all these low level celebrities but celebrities that Sean Whalen uh Roach from people under stairs like I'm friends with these guys like right I talk to them not every day usually once every three months but like I talk to them like we can communicate and so I'm hitting them up going do y'all know about this like what is this because it like they're literally telling stories that are ripped off from my script which is published in a book on Amazon. And I was like, huh, this is weird. And shitstorm happened, man. You found out this dude has scammed people out of $40,000, which is also the most annoying part is that he raised $40,000. Dude, I'm saying... I didn't raise that, goddamn that $40,000, and I made a legit movie. Right, that shit blew my mind. That's why I was so pissed off about it. And you say you're surprised I remember it, but dude... When that was going on, I was going to bat for you like hardcore in all of the, the horror chat rooms and stuff. Like everybody was talking shit about your movie and I'm like, no, no, dude, wrong fucking guy, wrong movie. Hell, in the long run though, it may have helped because it did. It, well, I've definitely lost some people because they think I'm that guy. I got to say my part a lot and get out there and be like, here's my movie. You know, like, I did a lot of press after that. I was on, like, right. ten different shows. Right. It, was, it was insane, man. That was the closest, that was the biggest drama I've ever been in. But, hey, hopefully it, it worked for your bet. You know, there's no such thing as bad press, they say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what, tell me a little bit about, uh, you said you have a star in this movie. What was it like working with somebody who was in, an actual actor on a movie? I mean, of course all of our friends are actors. We know local actors, but I mean somebody that's been on production sets 
previously. Yeah. Oh man, look, Erin Brown, um, she is an amazing girl. She's my friend at this point, you know, like I, I love her to death. And it's kind of intimidating when you start working with someone that knows the craft. Because when you're a director on a set and you have local people around you, even if they're good, you know that you're in charge, that you have to take care of it, and you're going to be confident because, like, it's your movie at the end of the day. It's got to get done. But when you have someone that actually knows how movies work and has done – God, I mean, she's done 80 films at least, you know? Like, she would lean over and, like, whisper to me. She helped me with several scenes, like, need to do another shot of that, get this. And it was like, this is brilliant. So I loved working with her. Um, she brings a lot to the set when she's on it. And then it's also just crazy because you're working with someone that you're a fan of. Right. And then you're friends with, so it always blows your mind because like for anyone listening that who doesn't know her, like she was in Lord of the G string. She was in spider babe. She was in lingerie. She did a lot of those, uh, skin things back in the day. And I mean, I had to stop several of my actors being like, oh my God, I used to jerk off to her the other day. And I was like, shut up. Don't yeah. tell her that. That's not good. We know. Oh, and man. Uh, she has a rabid fan base too, man. Like, oh my God, we brought her to uh, Days of the Dead uh, just before COVID mm-hmm. broke out. And, you know, I knew she had fans, but I'm talking about people were lining up waiting for her, like bigger lines than Jason's getting. And I'm like, holy shit she doesn't do many conventions so right right yeah that's 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 awesome man because the that's the rarity of it if you could bring somebody to a con who doesn't really do cons that's people will come regardless because you got fanboys that'll be like, oh shit she's gonna be there for sure let's fucking go to this table and bam you sold 50 dvds <laughs> no. um well, before I move on to the news, uh, I'm going to keep you on here for, uh, with me for the news as well uh, and bounce back and forth with you. Uh, but before we do that, what can we expect from Richard Tanner in the future, man? Well, what I am currently working on, and I just started it, was uh, with Room for Rent getting so many views, I have been thinking a lot about YouTube. Because I know once you get, uh, I think, a thousand subscribers you can get paid and all that so please subscribe to the above short youtube page and i am doing my own show called director on director to where i actually get other directors and talk very similar to what we're doing uh more of like shooting the shit and talking about films and everything and then putting a lot there i'm also in the process of developing a youtube series uh, but that's very early on right now. That's why I'm doing this to kind of keep it relevant in the meantime. But if you like Are You Afraid of the Dark and you like that kids horror, but just a little bit too adult for kids, that's what I'm going for. I'm actually not going to be so extreme, but I want to get that feeling again. Right. So hey, if anyone has kids that they want to put in horror and, you know, come over here, that would be great. <laughs> Well, I have uh, I have a couple kids that I'm working with now in in uh, Night of the Pumpkin People. We actually start shooting Night of the Pumpkin People in uh, five days. Wait, today's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Five days, man. And my uh, boys are giving some good kudos to those kids, by the way. Oh man, they're they're great. They're super professional. Um, you know, every time they deliver a punchline, it's great. So I mean. I'll definitely send you their contact information. Um, but yeah, that's that's awesome, man. And um, uh, one more time, in case they want to buy uh, some stuff for you from you. Um, and then hold on, Church of Chuck says, "All hail the Crypt Keeper." That's awesome. And then he says, "1K subs and 4K watch hours gets you in the YouTube partnership program." Okay, that's that's something I didn't know. Um, but one more time, where can they find your store and uh, where to stream you at? So you can find my store at www.abuckshortproductions.com slash store. And then streaming, of course, you can find me on YouTube. Just look up a buck short and subscribe. And then Troma Now is where you can go to find Frank and Thug and not, you know, give money to my awful distributor. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well... 
I got a couple announcements real quick, and then we're going to end the stream. Uh, we've been usually I keep my stream around an hour, um, and we had we've been having such a good conversation. The hour has flown completely by. I, I looked at the time, like, oh shit, it has been an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, so first thing I want to bring up is um, I don't know if you listen to Ice Nine Kills at all, um, but they are a band who. Uh, couple years ago did an album called Silver Scream and it was all about horror um, I mean they had a Jaws song Michael Myers, Freddy, Jason and the way they do it did it was so beautiful well they're coming out with a second one called um, Welcome to Horrorwood and um, mm -hmm. they just released uh, the song last week Hip to be Scared uh, which is a uh American Psycho. Oh yeah, and they even had the Huey and the Lewis metal breakdown. It was great. But today, they actually dropped this one, um, which is called Assault and Batteries. And uh, if you guys can't tell, there's the picture. Uh, it's it's all based on Child's Play. And uh, man, the music video for this shit is just absolutely insane. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you don't know who this band is, um, go check at least this video out after this stream because I'm telling you, man, uh, the symphonic metal, uh, his vocals in it, the subject matter, and the visuals of the video is just absolutely fucking bonkers, and it makes me second guess myself doing music. It's so good. Um, <clears throat> But uh, make sure you, that just dropped today, man. If you guys are a horror fan, go check out this band, Ice Nine Kills. The song is Assault and Batteries. And speaking of songs, um, you know I have my single out right now that um, it's called Any of This. Well, this week we're dropping another single. It's my cover song of this song here, Alice Cooper's Man Behind the Mask. Um... And that will be available only uh, on YouTube. Uh, so make sure you guys go subscribe to the YouTube. Um, and uh, you guys will get that on um, this coming Friday. Um, and none of my shits want to work for me, so there we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, get that single this coming Friday. And also this Friday on the Catacombs. Um, we will be doing a live holiday stream um, uh, called, uh, it's just the Friday the 13th stream, where myself, Luke the Goon, and the Zool Jersey Devil talk on the catacombs about the beloved Friday the 13th franchise. Uh, we're going to dig deep. We're not just going to talk about the movies. We're going to talk about the video games, the comic book lore, um, and at the very very end you guys are gonna find something out super super fucking cool uh i won't be able to talk much about it but you guys definitely definitely want to tune in for that one um so join us over at the catacombs this friday friday the 13th for a holiday special uh also just a reminder nasty bash tickets are on sale right now uh i'll be playing nasty bash this year it's september 17th 18th and 19th in uh, Carl's Tavern in New Haven, Indiana. Um, tickets are on sale, uh, sale at nastyshop.com and I cannot stress how dope this lineup is. It's three days of music and barbecue and uh, everything dope. Who knows, we might even bring the barbecue sauce back for Nasty Bash, uh, which by the way, we sold completely out of. Uh, and that brings us to our next topic. Um, my brother Danny has uh, been busting his ass with uh, St. Pete Sauce Company. Um, as you know, we did a uh, vampire one that was garlic called Sauce Feratu. Um, we did the Monster Melon one that is still uh, available. We only have 20 bottles of that left before it's gone. And we also did a human barbecue, barbecue sauce, and dry rub. Um, Aaron, yeah, Aaron bought it all. Huge shout out to Aaron. There was uh, five bundles left, 
and he hit us up and he was like i want all the barbecue sauce give it to me so i was like all right cool so uh shout out to aaron for supporting that um hell yeah luke the goons giving the horns uh we're gonna have a good time friday but um saint pete sauce company is now officially a uh released brand on its own it's uh, he's got st pete sauce coat.com as you see there on the screen and uh here's his one of his first um uh what do you call them um mascots it's the florida alligator with pepper burning his tongue and uh, it's Q man and he's got so much going on uh, coming up with our other artists um, and we like I said we still have the monster melon we now have the big bottles of sauce for available right now um, and for his launch the other day he did a brand new sauce called the mouth of the south and it is a orange and clove flav flavored southern heat uh hot sauce uh so make sure you guys go check out my brother danny at stpsaucecode.com and um so before we go i got one more huge news um and this is going to cover the uh whole page for just a moment so i just want to uh, show you guys the brand new flyer for that's right, we're going on tour this uh, Halloween. Dean's Traveling Creep Show. Uh, the artwork has been done by Legion, um, and we will be posting this tonight after the live stream. Um, and this is 21 dates of pure madness at uh, haunted houses across America. Um, we're literally doing Texas, uh, New Orleans, Florida, Georgia, uh, Kentucky, Alabama, uh, Illinois. Um, we are taking the monster show on the road, finally, uh, COVID permitting. So there you go, guys. We finally have the tour up and running. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. Richard, thank you again so much for coming on. Um, it was a really great conversation and I hope all of my friends go to his page, support another artist, uh, so that we can keep doing indie horror and keeping horror alive. Um, but yeah, that's the show for tonight. Make sure you guys hit that tip jar if you can. Um, the show's not free to do, so <laughs> any pennies coming in uh, would be awesome. Make sure to go to uh autumndaleshop.com um like i said we only have 20 bottles of the hot sauce left and then we have the new big bottles of sauce for Atu. teas are gone this weekend that's right after this weekend the teas will be gone uh and um 92.3 the scream shirts are available right now so we got a lot of cool stuff up there and there's two vampire hunting kits left they're only 30 bucks and they come with the new album uh, so pick up one of those if you can. But other than that, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. I love you with all my heart. Army of the Heartless. 